Okay, you're going to call the meeting to order. It's going to be set up for all. We've got uh, about three after six. Okay, welcome to everybody. Um, is there any changes that need to be made to the agenda? Want to read my agenda. Uh, Approve the thirty first minute as well. Okay. So we're gonna put the uh, so we can add that. Okay, so center road if you will. Gaming right and then there was a minute. You said center road and what else? And I uh the minute was thirty one minutes. Oh yeah. Of the agenda. Yeah. Do you have another agenda pack for yeah. Susan? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you wanted to address the Centerville Road first and get that out of the way? Or? Yeah, so every year the state of Vermont sends a big uh, welcome package of sorts to the new grant cycle. One of those is a bunch of forms we have to certify that we have a road inventory that we spend more than $600 a mile on our roads. Much of these kind of traditional checkoff lists. Another one's the uh, Network inventory, which we have, which basically says we know where our roads are because we keep the state highway map up to date. So every, all those can be checked off. Some have to be signed as part of the application process. So about this time of the year, if we can agree on a project to apply for, then the board would say, yes, let's go after. I talked to Roland earlier about Centerville Road. Uh, that's been advocated by highway to get on it pretty soon, or we're going to start losing chunks. So the board would say, yes. Uh, and usually through a vote, apply for Centerville Road as to paving and authorize run the final paperwork because they always ask for authorization. So if the board's agreeable to that project, then authorize me to apply for it, basically. Oh, okay. Then I can sign everything without coming back for the board approval. And then you still have to sign the acceptance part, which is if it gets awarded, there'll be another vote. Done the room, exactly. yeah. Okay. Kind of a two step process to get. Okay. So do we need uh, to make a motion for that? So the the motion is to uh, apply, apply, give you authorized. authorization to apply for yeah. the correct sign whatever the application documents, requires. sign whatever. Okay, I'll make that motion. And this this grant is a uh, is a no match grant. I don't think. Uh, they're all eighty twenty, one hundred seventy five thousand max. Good second. Okay. Yeah. Any there's further no discussion? There's no zero matches. No, no, no. I agree. I, I, I was just, I, I want to make sure there's an education behind it. I this know. Would be That'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I yeah. did. Yeah. Back in the day, the section that we picked is 380000 right now. So that's almost within our budget. Yeah. If that's a grant. Yeah. And I like it. Haven't we discussed this, the Centerville Road project prior? I feel like we talked yeah, about it a very long ago. Because the year before that, we got Center Road. So uh, okay. We keep, we keep applying every year. That's that's what you're. That's what I'm remembering. Okay. 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 Chassis has a motion. He seconds it. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 You may oppose abstaining. The ayes have it. So. Okay. And let's see. Let's talk about the uh, minutes for the thirty first. Okay. Use that to max. I can look it over. Any objection to the minutes? <laughs> that's that's my bet too. So I have a question. Sure. So let's <laughs> just ask: Do we think the cost of all those materials will keep going up? Oh, well, yep, it probably will. And so if by the time, because what this isn't a bid on it yet, right? This is just basically is what it would cost. So if it, if we get three eighty and it comes in at four twenty, we just get the money someplace. Uh, it's, it is kind of a wild card. The thing that we're really trying to do is lock in the one hundred seventy five. Okay. So that's the first step. If, if that comes through, then we know what to tell bidders what our budget is because we we'll look at our own budget. And then we start to find out what the actual bid is. So it's kind of a three step money process. And we do have money budgeted that isn't going to be known until town meeting day, which is, for example, in your paving budget. So you don't know if that's all going to get approved. The way this intersection is broken up, we could always pull the North Bay Park 
Yeah, that's how we have to do it. You, yeah, right. Second. You do less, basically, or you change. Roland and I were talking about the best uh, method and means and taking off the top by a couple of inches and putting back four good inches of pavement. You could less, lower your life by going to two inches of new pavement. Gotcha. Okay. So you, you have to make those judgment calls. Do you want the length and less quality or do you want shorter length but higher quality? And that, that's why I'll be back to the board saying, we got the grant, we have the money. Now, how much length do you want? Because it'll determine mm -hmm. how you do it. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. More to come. Okay, back to the minutes. Any objection to the minutes? Discussion? No, I will make a motion to approve the minutes from the 31st. Second. Okay, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Be opposed, abstaining. No, I'm abstaining. She's abstaining. Yep. Oh, you're right here. We're here. Which part of Florida were you in this time? No, I was with my kid. <laughs> <laughs> I'd already committed to picking them up in the court. Okay. Uh, sinkhole project. Okay. So. About two years, we've been trying to figure out how to get through the state's right away process. And most of that delay, probably three quarters of the delay, was due to the foreclosure on 38 West Main. When it goes into foreclosure, the banks start tossing around the property. So you can never really get a hold of anybody to sign. And generally, they're going to say no because they're holding this property to pretty much sell as is. And they don't want to add any easements or any other conditions to whatever they got from the foreclosure. Property was eventually auctioned. There was no notice. I think we were trying to keep an eye out for it. And then it sold before the town, because the town could have gotten involved with that auction price, but that didn't happen. Uh, Steve Yarek bought the property and he has raised some design issues, which is really back to step one. Right away is the, almost the last step before bidding. And I had a meeting with him last week and tried to explain that the town's sort of in a tough position because we've been working on the sinkhole project for so long. Right. Now we're trying to work with five property owners to get easements, and there's a three-step process to easements. The first step was uh, securing one easement out of six, which left with five, and that's the donation phase. So Steve got sort of was stuck in this uh, getting used to the property, finding out how Vermont operates from Texas, you know, try to learn all the ropes. He's a semi-developer in Texas. So he brought the knowledge and he had to fit it into how we operate. And he's really coming in. I told us last week, you're really coming in with some good thoughts, but you're way at the end. In order, if we made any changes to the design plans, which are already approved, ready to go to right away and then go to bid, you have to go back to step one between state and federal reviews yeah. and right away. And it's just a it's it's unknown how long that would take. The other thing is see, federal rules always change. So you, you could technically end up with a change rule that could change the design and add costs. Really. So we tend not to, once we get state approval, to go backwards. We, we still want to go forward. So that's where a lot of towns will say, let's get to a certain point with right away and go as far as you can, basically, with negotiating, you know, meeting on site, which we did a couple of times with uh, Steve and a couple of the neighbors, with the engineer, try to sort out the questions, and then you end up with a, no, we're not going to donate, we want to do the second right-of-way phase, which is offering a preliminary, something called the in-house estimate of value. So if you have 300 square feet, just basically do simple math, what is your land worth, multiply by that percentage of your total, and you say, that's what we think the easement's worth. Um, and they take it or leave it at that point. That's where we are now. Steve last week was objecting strongly based on ADA concerns and some federal uh, rights issues that he was raising because, because the money's partly federal, all the federal rules kick in. So he, you can look through all the federal rules and find something that isn't quite right. And he thought that the removal of the crosswalk at West Main Street was something that shouldn't have happened way back at the beginning. And I remember that conversation because we had that discussion during scoping to put that into a three-way stop, basically yeah. turn West Main into a T, put a stop sign, have it all controlled with crosswalks like a normal intersection highway objected because they didn't want to stop on a plow southbound onto Main Street. They already have a plow hill issue coming from Depot Street by the school, and they didn't want to change what they're used to doing there. There's no stop sign. 
Well, and, and that was, that was, that was well, from way back. I mean. Right. That's from way back. And folks that drive it all the time came in. It wasn't just the road crew that came in and said, we don't want to stop on that hill. So that was designed right. back right. into the plan right. to keep it a through road. And the engineer, which is some engineering, looked at it and said, there's no controls here. You have a crosswalk with limited sight lines. We should take that out and, and relocate that and get it out of that immediate intersection. And that's what plans went to final design. Steve comes in, best intentions, looking at it fresh, so to speak. I think he's a big advocate for bike pad and traffic calming and all that stuff. And he really wanted that crosswalk put, put back in. It's up there now. It's it's not stop sign the situation, it's just a crosswalk on that corner. So when he raised those issues, we had Summit Engineering and, and VTrans relook at that removal, I guess you want to call it, just to make sure there was nothing in there. And it came out with a, 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 a more firm statement that it really shouldn't go there without the three-way stop. So we went even further, so to speak, based on his concerns. And I, when I met with him last week, I said, we're, we're down that road too far. The plans are all approved. We can't have the engineer now say, put it back without putting the stop sign back. And I know that there's objections from the select board and the highway crew to putting a stop sign. So it's like, you know, I just, I didn't, I left it like that. But then I, when I sent the staff report to you all, there's four or five other paths that the town could take. And my recommendation on all five, if we can't get the, um, the, the concurrence of a fair appraisal type process done, is, is to keep on that track, which is a legal linear track of, okay, we did this, what's your answer? No, yes. What's your answer? No, yes. And keep going. Uh, versus the other option, which is to redesign that thing, basically come back to a scoping thing and start over again on that on that intersection. Uh, is, there, is there an opportunity for an amendment? After, and this is basically how the, any project would work according to VTRANS rules, we have to get to this project the before during, you can do an adjustment. Before you can start adjusting things and moving a curb or moving a sidewalk or you know making minor changes, you can do those during construction through change order. We can't put the crosswalk back because the engineer is too far on that. But we might be able to design out of some of the easements that we need for 38 Payne Street by pulling things back. But again, that's still each change order has to go through all the steps. I just know if there was a design of it that we could, or like with the permitting of the state. Now, it, it, at any point now, we can do that. That's what I'm saying. That is an option. We'd have to get the engineer to look at it again, come up with a proposal, go back to the engineering team to be trans, and come up with an amendment. Uh, the permit, amendment. Per, permits would have to be updated. I wouldn't do it on the change order side because that those are always more expensive in the end. In my world, that if I bid something and there's a change in the design, I always win on the change. Oh, it's just tons of things that get added. <laughs> so, I think the design change that you're talking about more is like going from the scoping phase and getting it done before you get to 90% done on the design. Yes. In that sweet spot. Yeah. You, you think you know what you want at 30% or the end of scoping, and then you tweak it in the end before you get to those approved plans. Once the approved plans are done, the town attorney spent time drafting deeds. The surveyor's been out surveying and easements to calculate the square footage. All that work would have to be redone, so it's not uh, not cheap. Once you get to this particular stage, and I and I think at then you're starting to debate. Oh, so if you go all the way to eminent domain, that's expensive too. But is it any more expensive than doing the design work building the project? Probably not at that point. You know, so a hearing or two at the court, and they they make the final decision. So Steve called on Sunday or Saturday this weekend, I sent an email and said that he thought about it since our meeting and he's okay now to not fight the process, the normal process. So he's not gonna file like a suit to stop the project. He's not gonna advocate for that crosswalk to go back in. And part of that was going to send my staff report that look, we have lots of, we have other paths that we could take if you're not gonna just go you know, through the normal assess the process. So I, I think relatively positive, it was just he, he had stuck in his, I want that crosswalk because I think it's better for the town kind of thing and slows traffic down. And those, and I said, those, those are, you know. Way That's way. an awful intersection anyway. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, even turning that bus <laughs> made into a 90 isn't going to help a lot. Yeah. But the, the sight line for a couple of people on the hill on 38 Main, the 
the vent property is there and there's a big hill that all will be pushed back so that that driveway the intersection will be more visible as you come up, up the hill it's not going to take a lot from i guess the north the northeast side exactly it's not, not a lot you can do on that no corner. it really isn't getting the people out of what the project will do because the people are going to be pushed to the south side of main street and they won't be crossing there under the new design Okay. They'll have to go to the south side by um, the governor's house or whatever. Yeah. Walk, that side walk. And then they can cross West Main Street. From that side, yeah. yeah. Which makes more sense. It does Same make more sense. sense. Yeah. yeah. That's where we're that's where we're sitting. So the what's the status on the sinkhole? Is it getting worse? Uh, it took a couple of years to stabilize, but he is it's stable. Mr. So no, Mr. Ben has urgency. Come, he, he'll hear the water running and say it slipped a little bit. Mark will go over and look at it. That's kind of what we've been doing for three. Four years now, been a while. <laughs> like the way you said that, man. yeah. I just yeah. Kind of goes by. Yeah. Yeah. It was definitely a pre-COVID sinkhole. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Now it's breaking yeah. up. Before I was in the yeah. yeah. There, there's, there's, more, there's always imminent danger for the road. Yeah. No, it's about yeah. 20, 30, 20, 25 feet off from the road. So it's really it's on the side of his driveway. It's in his yard. It's flagged and staked. So, but it could it could get worse. But right now it hasn't. At this point in time, right. Okay. So do we need to do any? No, no action. I want to get everybody on the same page because I've got a little uh, tenuous there. Now it's, I think it's okay. back on track to start moving back yeah. towards the easement process. Okay. Great. Hi, folks. All right. How do you help? Can we be of service to you? <laughs> well, I don't know if you guys are at that point. Sure. But uh, is there a certain topic that was on the agenda that... Uh, you're interested in it or anything like that? Yeah. We want to pause and sure. Okay. Yeah. The topic is road conditions mm -hmm. in 50 percent of Wait, can you can you tell us who you are, your name? Kevin Jenkins. Hey, Kevin, okay. Okay, <laughs> just some games. Yeah. yeah. Uh lack of sand. Lack of maintenance. This winter has been pretty lack of in Garfield and other dirt roads, back roads. I'm traveling home prior to the bus running because I start early. Yeah. And when I'm finding myself running in full wheel drive and then half an hour up through the bus is coming, no sand. You know, kids are on the bus. Everybody's children are on the bus. We've got to address the more sand in quite a bit of areas. Last Friday was a two-hour delay. Roads were slipping their, their ice rate. I come by the town garage at 10.30, not a soul in it. All the guys gone home. Roads, back roads still so great. School buses still run. Two-hour delay still run on the two-hour delay. Still right on the way home. Why are our buses running in so big roads? Good question. I wasn't aware of it until you told me now, but uh, Garfield Road, uh, we've actually gotten complaints about uh, too much sand on some of the roads, not not up there. I'm just saying that we received a, a complaint that it was too much sand on the roads. Just last week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, really? You know, I've been talking about the the discretion of the driver. I, I do think that that is it. Um, I know that uh, Ryan used to stand our, you know, the taker of our road. I don't know if he still does any sand in a while because sometimes it's Ryan, sometimes it's Mark, sometimes it's Mike Griggs. You know, it's a variety. Um, but like I said, I do think it's the discretion. I think they should should uh, take a little bit more care in some of the areas on the road. A lot of the corners, like the Green River Reservoir corner, the corner by um, Steve Watson's, uh, because it doesn't get any sun. It doesn't get any daylight time. So it doesn't help during the day. It's safe. I see, you know, 24 hours. Shaded so you can get sun in Where we live, we live just, you know, past Reservoir, uh, 2593. So we're kind of up there to the pavement uh, on the top of uh, Trauma Hill. Yeah. Or, no, it's it a you know, three quarters of that road is shaped, so it doesn't get a lot of sun. Um, further up the road, because 
we travel up there quite a bit. Um, there's still quite a few areas that don't see sun through there. It's pretty shaded up by uh, Terry Perry's. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that stretch, same thing. Uh, I think if they said a little bit more on, it'd be a lot better. I mean, just yesterday, like, <laughs> you can uh, match what I say with Chris Watson with Mullen County. There was two cars off the road just, just during the day. Uh, yep. One was over the bank by uh, Steve Watson's, like over the bank on its side. Mm -hmm. uh, Foxes had to come pull that out along with assist from Home Bear. <laughs> And then in the afternoon, before Bessel came through, there was another car off the road just off the pavement. Uh, so, I mean, yesterday it was 50 degrees. I know. Yeah, you, it was glazed. It glazed. Oh, I was like, my room's all mud. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening, I think, is they're judging it based on other roads and the condition of those where they're not taking, maybe they're not taking into account the shaded areas like they're saying. Right. Right. in there and he needs to have attention to see Watson. Oh okay. It is Yeah. It is You're in a different country. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but it's I'm more concerned with buses. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. I mean, residents uh, have learned to drive up there. Residents live up there. Sure. Lisa Reen is a yeah. driver for oh, kids. Yeah. Um, she tells the kids, you know, be careful when you don't cross the road because it's really mm -hmm. slippery because her bus is slipping and she's driving up. So if the bus driver is saying it, right? Did the bus have trouble that you know? Not that we've seen. Lisa, I didn't hear it. I didn't know. I know there was a dis big discussion in the county about that particular morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, like you said, there road depending on where you're at and where you're yeah. going can be totally different oh, yeah. within a mile or two right yeah. i mean silver ridge so, road so it's super not as hard off. Hard. Right. still frozen over barely like a 12 foot section that's what i was going to bring up you probably take silver ridge road that's the only road i mean at the fall it's the only good road i take so i'm like oh the, the, it has been really good this year on that right. so right and the corners are so i think there's just I think the shaded areas are yeah, bad. Just need to let them so know. We'll, yeah. we'll yeah. bring this up yeah. to the county yeah. so they'll make, take more attention to that area. Yeah. Can I take it for a teeny bit more salt of Carpenter's Hill instead of doing one, one pass? Mm -hmm. That would be fantastic. I mean, if that means plowing up, plowing back down, and then throwing sand up and down, two trips, three trips, whatever. Because one side always is good, the other side always stays Probably ought to be a system where the bus drivers, you know, can call. Like, I you know, think they do, don't they? I would, I would think. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty, that's a, that, you know, and they put that out through um, the superintendent's office. Yeah. yeah. That if there was ever a problem with the bus driver, they stop, they radio previews, previews, let, you know, the town garage know what the superintendent yeah. Yeah. But like I said, Lisa, she's been driving for years. She knows. She probably doesn't complain either. If she, no. it, 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 she needs to. It should, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. It doesn't change. Uh, yeah. uh, we don't know we're in the spring now, but well, not yet. Well, not yet. Yeah. yeah. Wishful thinking. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Don't press the number next year. Yes. <laughs> After March, whatever. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of done the same way all winter. It's been very slack this winter, and you know, your last one. And you're, and you're saying it's mostly in the afternoon. Day. It's all day. I mean, they may make one trip up there. Mid morning. I mean, I've seen them drive up through before the or after the buses have already been. Should they come out you know, like eight o'clock at night? It's like, no, guys, we run before the buses, night and morning. You know, That's you can't meet a bus, you can't meet a cow truck on that road with a school bus. Oh. You know, and you shouldn't. And I'm sure they have that. You know, Alexander made it so that there was no cow trucks on that road. Before the school buses, the school bus, the town truck ran before the school bus, town truck ran in the afternoon before the school bus. I mean, he was very adamant about that one. That's also due to have the school bus sliding in the end. He must go one year. You probably remember that because you're great at chess. So he really stepped into that and yeah. said, you know, no more. But it's even in the afternoons, you know, we got a quick flurry up there. Just like today, we had that early morning snow that run through about six o'clock. Well, that turned right to ice. 
instant ice. As soon as you drove on it, it was so pretty. Yeah, packed it. Yeah. It, it was that perfect temperature where you know, it's definitely right over. Yeah. And even now, coming down here, you know, their roads are still slippery. Their ice, they never run this out. They don't run out today. Okay. You know, that's they had a cloud that so I was at a four, four, four. They run through about four o'clock this morning. Oh. And everything, I don't think they've been back no. the whole day. Right, so, probably not. Yeah. You know, I know it's, we got hours. I know we got winter hours, we got overtime hours, but you know, yeah. I'm more concerned with buses, the school bus, the children, when they're so free. Buses don't have chains. We rely on the town to sand the roads and take care of maintain the roads. And now, what time do the buses come through in the afternoon? Oh, um, must be the yeah. quarter. After, I'd say quarter later. After later, yeah, and you'd probably be the first stop. Probably no, no. no. Oh, because not many. Like the fifth to last. Year. Oh, yeah. so they're all before you, not yeah. after you. Okay. In the morning, well, in the morning, Lisa goes all the way up to the end. Oh, okay. And she picks up um, just at the the town line, like Fitzgerald. Sure. Yeah. And then she'll she'll go down to uh, like Gopher Grove Farm. Oh, okay. Yep. And then she comes back down through. So my kids get on the bus about seven fifteen. Okay. Like like January was a different January we usually have it's because great. it warms up. Then your sand drops through. Right. Yes. Yeah. You know, so do you want your guys out there 24 7? You know, that's going to be a hard call. Right. It is a I was call. curious yeah. on the bus. I agree with you. Then that way we can. No, not 24 7. But the afternoon. Right. I mean, there's so many shaded areas on that road that, you know, the sand does e drop. Even if you put the sand on in the morning really heavy, you're going to, by afternoon, the way the, the way the winter's going to be, your, your, your sand's going to be gone. So I don't know. What the right answer is here, but I think maybe, maybe some bigger rock in the sand. What are you running now? Three quarter, three eighths. I think Mark is running half inch. Eh? I think it's about the. I think okay. he's running half inch. But I mean, I used to run three quarter um, inch, and when it first started. When Dwight and I first started that, it was a little complaints about broken windshields and all that, but we never got nine. Every once in a while, you're going to get one. But I, I think the way the winter's been, if you went to a heavier stone. We have that capability here right now? I mean, what's that? Our, our sand's already put up. Would, do we have that capability to go with heavier stone for this year? Well, we wouldn't this year, but. I mean, it, it, it's just the guys that are heavier on the sand for now, right? I, mean, it, 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 I don't care if you put the sand on in the morning, the way the weather's been, yeah, the way the weather's yeah. been, your goddamn yeah, sand is going to drop right through your 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 snow that's there, your ice that's there. I mean, just the only thing you can do is go back out in the afternoon the and free. start cooling right. off. That's about all you can do. Yeah. I mean, you could, you could put an inch layer of sand on up there, and you know what's going to happen. It drops during the day, but it's the after, you know, it's yeah. the two o'clock run. That needs to get done. Needs to get done before the buses run it. Well, I think that's something the board's going to have to talk over too with the with the overtime that they're going to get in from, you know, three o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, and you want them boys to stay around until two o'clock in the afternoon. With you know, I know we've tried to cut back a little bit, but I know that. But how much of the um, when when you look at the town as a whole? It probably isn't a lot of road that needs the, the afternoon sand, right? So it's not like the whole crew's got to go out and do the whole town again. It's just certain areas that are a, that are a problem. Hot spots. Yeah. yeah. Right. Or the cold, cold spots. spots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, yeah. I, I, I almost think if you went to our heavier stone, because that's pretty fine stone that yeah, but we gotta get we gotta get through this year. No, yeah. I know it. They'll, they'll figure out but next year. Yeah. Well, you're in the middle yeah. of February, yeah. and we, you know, heavy enough for now, and see if we do yeah. our best. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, maybe they could crush it, uh, big, you know, larger and leave it up to the pit up there, and pull it from there or something. You know, I know you'd have to have a well, they have loader up there. You have nothing to load it with up there. Yeah. And you're not blended up there yet. Yeah, yeah. Like it's not blended. You, you, this year would have been a. Yeah. This year would have been just at this side. Oh, no. no. <laughs>
You got a new phone and camera. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but uh, okay. yeah, I'll talk to Mark. Yeah. See if we can't yeah, work out something. <laughs> Emergency room. Someone take that from me. No, <laughs> She'll be here now. The only one my wife calls twice in her life. It's not my wife, but. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's on video, buddy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. My daughter. <laughs> she can watch it too. That's what I'd say too after that comment. <laughs> yeah, it was a good one. Wasn't it? <laughs> well, we appreciate you making us aware of it and uh, yeah. apologize that we uh, it's happened that way. But uh, you got my number now, and I want to hear from you if there's an issue or anything like that. And, well, you you got my number. You know my number mm. anyway. It looks like could be on speed dial. Somebody else has got it on speed dial. Yeah. yeah. New new phones are bad, <laughs> especially for lonely. <laughs> but I'll give you a call. Oh, yeah, it's just you know, I'll, I'm more concerned with the afternoon. Yeah, I was just saying. Yeah, well, yeah. because you know, yeah. I I have to meet the town truck and I'm on my way to work. Or you know, even when I get at two in the morning to go file. He's not far off behind me because I bumped into more spell and he's headed after us. Right. Mornings have usually been. I know Mark's got some stone up there. Yeah. It goes across just stone. Now he could run the loader up there when it was a slow day and get some of that stone and kick it off to the silly. We'll figure something out. Yeah. It's about, <laughs> it's about. Even if we had to buy some stone for crush stone or something just to do that area. Wait, it's not too. Big of an area. Well, it's like, two pretty much two right. sections and some exactly. more salt on the hill. Yeah. yeah, it's not. No, they're not yeah. huge areas. It's right. just the shaded, it, and it is. It's the shaded area. Yeah, yeah. right. You no, know, because right. when you turn and you come up around the corner by Jones's, yeah, from there to Munson Road will be a pothole mess. Right. Yeah, sun yeah. hits it. Yeah, yeah. You know? But as soon as you hit Munson Road, yeah. you got that whole hemlock slope. Right. All that right. sun in there. Yeah. You know, it's. It's all just the little spots that. And then you get up on flat in the wind. And then you get flat and then you wind blowing. So you know what happens there. Yeah. 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 By your brother, so you're seeing the wind blow across there. Like it's it's yeah. between, between him and his brother. Yeah. 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 Last weekend was really good. Yeah. It really blew up. I'll just run up there. Yeah. Must have really blew up there that night. Yeah. The wind yeah. blew. The right easiest fix. Right. Yeah. 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 You don't need these guys. But <laughs> maybe if we put a little bigger no, stone. just sending Ryan up in the end. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's really the biggest thing. That's, that's, that's all up there. <laughs> <board. laughs> Ryan right. up in the afternoon. We're not gonna let him sit yeah. at the shop off. But we're yeah, let him sit at home, and but then he can go. The trouble is, right. they go. They go home at eleven. They go home at noon. Right. It's going then, back out. Yeah, but it's only one of them, and it's only <laughs> on certain days. I mean, it's not every day. Yeah, it's not it's day. the days where, right. you know, it's the days you know where either we gotta remember too. The temp down here is not the temp. That's true. Right. It's like a 10 degree difference. Yeah. 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 So, you know, on the days that you think it doesn't need it, it's probably the days. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. You look, it's 40. That means it's a little perfect freezing up there. It's 33. There you go. There. Yeah. yeah. It's at that temperature. Right. It's that perfect temperature. Yeah. What time do you leave in the morning? Depends on the day. Yeah. If, I'm, right. if I'm plowing, I'm leaving the house at 2 30. Right. Because you got to drive to style. I drive to the mountain. Yeah. yeah. So, but like I said, on a normal storm, I met Ryan quite a few times at the bottom of the hill. Right. He's headed in, so it's not like, it's not the big mornings. They do great in the mornings. It's the afternoon bus that you know you get that sun and then you get and and what well, we had the pretty much the warmest January we ever had, or the third warmest January we ever had. So right. You know, that's that's gotta be a big factor of what what you're talking about. Right. That's part of it, yes. Are they far? Is the town far in a few overcrowd hours? What's that? Is the town like the town crew? Are they like really? No, far but I, I know they watch them. You know, they, they're they very good about that. Yeah. They try to watch them. Right. And, you know, the board has talked about overtime, yeah. you know, but we will let them work, you know, whatever's going to be safety. Right. You know, but yeah. <laughs> we're all trying to save a dollar here and there the way things are going. I believe we don't want to we don't want to save you know we don't want to save money if we're putting anybody in right in danger in right. danger or yeah. jeopardy or whatever i mean school buses are the most important thing on that road because 
<clears throat> as I know, you can't slow everybody down. You know, and some of them going off here due to speed and not. I mean, if, if you yeah. could get through to people, you could go two miles up there and it'd be perfect. But the minute you come into that shady spot around that corner where the waters run across the road a little bit, I mean, they have the same problem as you know down on the interstate. Mm -hmm. yeah. They can't keep them on the interstate. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, the, the state people run that interstate. And the thousands and millions of dollars that they put in salt and that stuff, and you can't keep the people on the road. I mean, it's it's sad. It's <clears throat> so I just think you know if we could just get through. We got a lot of people moving in here, and they've probably never drove in roads. I've heard people talking. Well, I didn't realize Eaton had so much snow. <laughs> yeah, you lived down in Connecticut all your life. I told you when you moved up here that the mountain road was that was where it snowed up there. Like mini Alaska. But yeah, just do what you can. Yeah. See what yeah. you can do. I mean, I'm more like I said, I'm more concerned about the afternoon. I'll talk to Mark and yeah, I'll have Mark either come talk to you or I'll call you in a couple of days. What's today? Yeah, give me a couple of days. I, I appreciate the approach, John. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Didn't come holler. I like it. I know, right? Yeah, I don't do anything good. <laughs> <laughs> Keep them in line. <laughs> but what are you saying? Years of therapy? Or <laughs> it comes with age. You <laughs> yeah. You do? <laughs> <laughs> Well, so you just probably don't remember how bad it was. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh shoot. Okay. Cool. Okay. Move on. Moving on. Okay, well, thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I will. I will be back. Town meeting day at Memorial Union High School. That is right. People are starting to find out that you. Where'd you get now? We just yeah. decided to. Revert to the pre-COVID time, so there. I've advised people that, you know, especially with articles and things like that, that they need to be talking to people to show up because there might be a question. Right. Uh, and if they are prepared, they'll have a good answer. It's a little bit of rehearsal, at least have somebody designated because I know the moderator or the select board chair will say, "Can somebody speak to this?" Yeah. And if there's crickets, you know, you kind of run that risk of somebody just saying, "Approve it anyway," or "Oh well, they don't have the time to come here." And so anyway, that's what I'm trying to do in between now and town meeting days, just to make sure I'm talking to the people that are on the agenda, the, the restorative centers on there, and things like that. Okay. We're gonna throw a sign up here that says "Posted down there." It's always has been. Okay. In the past. Okay. Oh, yeah. right. you. No, right. <laughs> yeah, pre COVID town meeting was always that one. Yeah. That's yeah, the not a new thing. That's in the town report that you all signed will be in the newspaper Thursday. Good. Okay, good. And the next Thursday, and the next Thursday, which is a bonding requirement because you have the $600,000 fire truck question. Oh, okay. So lots of notice about back to the oil, nine o'clock, 8 30, the polls open. You all usually get there in a the quarter of nine. Town report. Uh, just working with the printer today. They're doing the final setup for the big print job. So as soon as she gets me back a final ready to print almost version, we'll put that on the website, even though the paper stuff won't be here until towards the end of February, 21st or 22nd, somewhere there. Okay. So in the interim, people can go on the website now on the homepage and get linked up to the warning, which talks about offices and the bonding and the budgets on there and the sample ballot. So if anybody really wants to get a head start with the meat of town meeting day, it's already available on the, okay. on the website. So it's nothing's going to be a surprise if you're looking. If you're not looking and assuming it's back, you know, to ballot and you're waiting for your ballot, that's going to be a problem. Sure. I don't know how you totally get the word out other than all the newspaper and front porch forum postings and things like that. So I'm guessing some people will get all the way to town meeting day and remember that they're supposed to be voting and wonder why they didn't get a ballot mail to them because other towns are doing that kind of thing. Start posting on social media. 
Yeah, I mean, any anybody that has a chance to, talk to somebody if you're in a, in a bigger setting like this, hey, by the way, get to high school. Yeah. And, you know, starts at, you know, nine o'clock. So, okay. Uh, and I did talk to Paul Nesky a couple times, the town moderator, who was very interested in getting another name to take his, <laughs> his place up there. Oh, so, so there's no replacement for him. Yeah, yeah. Just to, it's an annual thing. That's the, one of the first things voted. And, okay. You don't get called on a lot during the year. I think if we had a special election, the moderator may come and run that, but we don't usually have those. So it's really just right. a town meeting day. The DLCT has their annual training thing, which is once or twice a year to get people that are totally green uh, up to speed. So I think that's generally a big recommendation if somebody was interested. And you can easily, easily get information on the job too before you even put your name in the hat at town meeting day. Uh, so if anybody's thinking about it, it's good to talk to the current town moderator before town meeting because they can kind of put their name out there. If there's more than one, then there'd be a like a four vote with raise your hands type of thing. Okay. But all is definitely willing to continue, but also hoping somebody takes over. Harder and harder to find people. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's about it. So yeah. Yeah. is Krista having good luck on help? I know she sent an email. Uh, as far as I know, she is, she, she's looking for a pickup truck for the time after the election. I think I'm going to help her during the day on Monday, which is the setup time. Okay. But they have to get out of there because school's on Wednesday. So All right. after the election, she has to, well, it takes about an uh, hour and a half to two hours, maybe, to cart everything back here. Okay. So she's, as far as I know, as of today, she hasn't found anybody with a pickup truck for after the election. Oh, she didn't ask me that. I have. We have a truck. Well, okay. highways can, is available during the day, and they'll help if they're not plowing. Okay. Um, I have a van that can take most of the stuff over there, so that Monday's not really the issue. It's the Tuesday. Okay. Tuesday night. Well, I'm going to be there Tuesday night helping count, so I might as well just bring my yeah. Car. Whoever's there is going to help pack up. Okay. <laughs> Many hands. Okay. Right? So that's that. Okay. But yeah, I think she hasn't thrown a, a distress flag out, so to speak. Okay. Okay. Good. She's Good. still talking to people. Yeah, I know. Like she emailed us and yeah. you know, emailed the group or whatever yep. for help. Okay. Yep. She's yeah. talking to Richard Bailey, I guess. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And I emailed today. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, yeah, town meeting day. I don't see for the ballot counting. Okay, the ACO biannual uh, payment agreement for 450 was. The catch up payment uh, by 50. Uh, we used to have a lead ACO who was the primary person to take calls 24 7, either from the sheriff, or the town clerk, from residents. And that person would sometimes perform the job well, and sometimes would not. We've gone through three or four since I've been in Hyde Park 10, 11 years. So it's kind of a sort of a burnout position because sometimes you have to take some really aggravated owners because they have a dog owner next door that doesn't care for their dog or somebody calls about a roaming dog and there's no dog to be found but it's you know you want to go see if you can help so keith resigned uh two years ago now i think and he just said i can't i just can't do all of that so that put it back on me and krista or whoever uh, sometimes dave gagne would go out on a call we had a, a serious case or the sheriff would come and the sheriff appreciates the ACO position because it's just one more thing that they have to do or they can't get to right away anyway so in the interim we ran to a couple of cases where uh Keith kept all of the gear um the cages the gloves oh. the chip reader for the for the dog and he, he never returned that back because during that time when nobody was there, I'd call him and say, is there a chance you can go corral this dog and get him up to the kennels because you have all the gear in the truck and all that? And he'd say, yeah, definitely, because the dog is roaming and somebody had just grabbed it on the side of the road. Oh. We don't have a kennel here. We, we have some people that might want to take a dog like that, but under the ordinance, we have to control that dog for 10 days once we get it. That's mostly to try to find the owner. At the end of 10 days, we can put it up for adoption or have it taken over by somebody. So there's that little, we need, the town needs to do something because the town is a uh, Hyde Park dog and nobody else is going to do anything. So we coordinate with Keith who would come in on those 
sort of dog safety cases, let's say. Not the barking dog, not the dogs coming over to poop at my yard calls, uh, or I think somebody's not taking care of their animals, but I don't know their name calls. You yeah. Know, just stuff that really takes up a lot of time. He's I can't do that. So we, this thing that we're trying to do now is trying to keep them to help on those more critical cases, but keep the lead ACOs vacant, basically, because we advertised a couple of times and we haven't found anybody that really wants that kind of job. And the two ACOs on both sides of us, one that works for Wolfhead and Johnson, they're both named Dean, uh, have agreed to help if things get really bad here. Oh, good. critical case before the sheriff would get involved. Oh, that. good. Okay. So if he's having trouble with something and or he has to go out of town, he's out in August doing the gun gun training kid, kid program up at the Memorial Fish and Game. He's really not available. And that's when uh, Dean or Dean would actually come in if there was something with animal safety going on. Oh. So we're, we're voting on a catch-up payment and a go for Yeah, so part of what he's been doing for a while has been you know, so sporadic, but he's been trying. I told him, you gotta keep your time on this. We're not expecting you to be a volunteer. And that's what he's sort of been doing, but he's been keeping track of his time. I said, if you're not gonna submit time, then maybe we can hope something that works better for you. You know, and we do that. Yeah, we do that as uh, as an alternate to people, uh, you know, that are available for certain purposes, but are on the volunteer side. So that's what this is. The catch up is the last year or so. We have the line on the board, right? Yeah, budget. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we work it into the animal control cost, which yeah. they're really small. I mean, because, yeah. And people tend to know that, you know what I mean? It's like if the resident is calling, I'll try to triage it in the sense of trying to figure out is this sheriff issue? Can Keith help? Can I help? Can Krista help? Can a neighbor help? Or right. they've got you help you. Know, and that's what I've been doing for a couple of years is just trying to triage it. And it is 24-7. Calls come whenever there's an issue. $450 biannual is not very much money. No, no. Not for somebody that I can call and who's very yeah. it is very people. willing. Yeah. yeah totally. you're, you're gonna deal with some angry landowners. Yeah. 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 And I'll deal with the angry landowners. So yeah. Yeah. But I'm sure he did some of that. Yeah, he probably does. Yeah. Is the annual budget for the payment? Uh, this, yeah, this year's a thousand. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this, year's in favor. <laughs> this year's a thousand dollars next year i think it's 900 or something but i think the, the costs are deferred they're hidden you know it's, like, it's almost like any other service you know when you get volunteers to help you, you spread it out to other people i think you're i mean we asked if we had yeah. aco if we had aco <laughs> working no, but if the ACOs are working and they're the 24-7, it is not a $900 a year job. Yeah. It is, it's getting up there to be, and we have, we pulled that back. So some residents will initially expect us to run out and take care of the barking dog. And we just don't have the resources and the sheriff will run by if they have a chance. Or Keith yeah. might drive by if he's going to more so. But it's not a, yes, we'll be there in two minutes to listen to the dog. Right. For a half an hour under the ordinance. <laughs> Oh, really? So it's not, it's not even a violation until the dog keeps barking. <laughs> so, you know, most dogs don't. Keith and I, exactly. Well, Keith and I yeah, agree. Right. agree that at some point the select board has to make a change in the ordinance so that people can at least read the ordinance and say, you know, dog barking is is no. not a problem, but the sheriff can afford, you know, because so, otherwise they look to the ACO and the ACO would come running out. And that that gets expensive. And I don't know if, if the town wants that. I don't really know what the town's level is. I know from a capacity point of view, we haven't been able to do. Do you get a lot of those guys? It, it, dog, <laughs> animal talk about once a week of some sort. Really? Yeah. You know, some it's either a licensing issue, a roaming issue. We had three lost dogs last week all at once. Oh, really? You know, yeah. Saint Bernard that was dropped off right. in, in North High Park. Um. Yeah, yeah. She she passed the 10 days, 12 or 15 years old, 12 or 12 years old. So then two other dogs, the owner came in and, and paid the penalty and took the dogs back. And they're like, oh geez, we we won't let that happen again. And of course, when we no license, no collar. Yeah. It's like, well, maybe it won't, but just by the way, we're not, you know, we're gonna hold the dogs to your license at least. It's, yeah. All right. Well, let's move forward. Make a motion. I'll make a motion to make the catch-up payment of five fifty and four fifty. 
And that's the way. assistant ACO, which is a title versus the lead ACO. I just okay. kind of, if it gets filled by a full ACO position, that we can revisit all this stuff. Yeah. Okay. We have a second. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Maybe opposed, abstaining. Nice hat. Good. And wish we had a thank you card to give to him too. He, you know, that. I'll let you I'll catch up. Yeah. You can write something in the memo. Right. So you do have to give you the memo to your prior identities. Okay. Uh, more Valley Rail Trail scoping uh, at the Depot Street Extension and ATR consult uh, selection team. team. Yeah, there's <laughs> a lot of stuff in there. So the um, and some of this really is not my favorite thing to do, which is the federal government is spending so much money, so much money. It's coming down to the towns basically. Because the state gets a hold of some money, whether it's ARPA money, transportation money, federal housing money, and it's all on credit card from the federal government. And some of it's okay, some of it's not. But every time I see, oh, the state has money to give us to solve a problem or a project, I always, in the back of my head, I'm like, my kids are probably going to have to pay for that, not <laughs> me. But it is getting us on some projects that maybe will have some benefit to high Park. So you have to kind of weigh all that stuff. This is one of those where the state, um, got some money from Bernie Sanders to make uh, amenity improvements to the rail trail. So they get, they get construction money to finish the 93. Maybe they, they can it. mow it. They have <clears throat> mowers, they're buying mow. It's going to be all different now. So we're out of the mowing business. Oh, good. But they got another chunk of money, three or $4 million for amenities at all these trailheads and crossings and things. And that's what this grant is all about. Is to do a scoping study for the triangle, which is the rail trail, Depot Street extension, and oh. Depot Street. And we already have a preliminary assessment of the Depot Street crossing because we had right. we had issues there before with visibility and things. Yeah. So this is tying that together. Yeah. What do we do about the parking lot, which yeah. is yeah. Yeah. right now developed with a fence? Yeah. So $30,400, 10% land, local match. And a board member needs to attend committee meetings. They recommend two local people. So my request was to have one, one select board member, <laughs> one yeah. planning committee, yeah. somebody from one of the one of the right. two boards. Yeah. And board yeah. boards are interesting and real stuff. And then the regional planning piece, because it's really a regional amenity, I really would like them to be engaged just at this early stage of scoping and they might have resources from their prior studies I, it feels like there's a a town effort being made on a regional basis and i sort of want to treat these projects like that so that's not just hyde park or it's not just the state but the region is getting involved with some of these things not for any particular reason just because they're, it's it regional. Part of the region. Yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> they're, they're, they're one of the only things this town has going for it right now. You know, right. It's, it's recreation wise. It's recreation yeah. Tourism, you know. We have your rec fields, but the village part. Right. So it's a multi, yeah. it's a multi-phase step. This is just the consultant selection paid phase, two or three meetings, and then the consultant would take over from there going to the thirty thousand dollar project, let's say. So this committee would be just short small. You know, with a, with a board member, myself, one person from regional planning to select the consultant. Consultant would take it from there and really do all the meetings and public hearings or whatever they want to do. I vote Susan. That's right. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. I like to go to those though. Huh? You really oh, like that? Whole, yeah. I mean, yeah. I've been doing this project for so many years. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going. Just coming it done. Right. So we got that done. I mean, the beauty the spot of my part that it certainly will be able to do it. If they put any money in so they can maintain it over the years, oh, right. Yeah. That'll be interesting. Uh, You're an awful bird on that. So they're not on that. It's wicked. Mm -hmm. feel it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and David are like, that's true. I can see that. Like a with, 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 not with all of what the state she has done to the town. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I know, I know that. Not with You're not. I don't know what I'm about it. I'm still learning. Can't even jump on the salt budget no more for them. We got to go out on our own. 
you can't keep saying you're still yearning. You're learning. You've been here a year. Yeah, that I, excuse is done. You know. I, it, it's, I'm still okay, learning stuff. I, tonight, I've learned ten things. You kidding me? <laughs> And the I'm still learning. Still learning. Still learning. Excuse every meeting. Right. Still learning. Yeah. Like he, he's still filling me out on this non-maintenance budget to the hill trail. Oh. I hope I hear him. Ron was on the meet and would make. He heard what they said. Uh, okay. I watch his face get red, and I know that it's something he's blaming. It, it so. makes him very angry. They wanted us to, to plow the state road from the roundabout. Oh, <laughs> That's what? right. They really they try to do sales pitch on that one. We yeah, all have pretty good. Okay. So chair, municipal uh assessor. Oh, excuse me. Uh, 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 oh, he's in the middle of the found round the belt. Good enough. No. Right. Do people. You oh, you. Yeah, 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 I know you mentioned it. You yeah. Interesting. For it. You did really? officially apply for it. Good. Oh, all in favor? Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Missed that one. Oh, but you had to go through the review for that, right? That email we got. It's not a true oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So it's not a special meeting. Okay. Special meeting just for the. No, no, no. Oh. I do have a request. Yeah. Roll call. Roll call. Yeah. Okay. So well, if you're an assessor. And the mic's been about equally when you're watching the remote speaker. Yeah. Right. You'll understand. Go home and watch yourself on television. You'll be famous. <laughs> You should be special. That's yep. right. Uh, assessor. So the assessor question is on the tell me warning for the second time. There's nobody running for the three open lister spots this year. So those are open, which will assume we won't get 40 or 50 write ins for one person to fill those spots. I think that's the number to fill the lister spot, which forces the select board to hire qualified professional assessor to do the grant list maintenance. That's what the state law. So you don't have a, you don't have a choice. In that. The state really wants you to, and and the threat is withholding state grant money. So we don't necessarily want to mess with that. The two years ago, we knew this was coming because we had lost listers and one was left. Mm -hmm. uh, Ten years ago, we knew that the listers couldn't comply with the state rules and guidance, so we hired under a five thousand dollar a year contract outside assessors come in and they did that they would help work with julie or whoever was on the board to do some of the technical stuff uh, matt reed is ending his term in a few weeks he decided not to run so that he has agreed to be the assistant assessor and that's what he's been doing for the last year so the assessor team was nemrick their contract ended they called me last week do you want to resign we're filling up our schedule for april April 1 is the deadline to get the new construction on your grant list. And I said, I have a meeting tonight and I need to update the board on this thing. So there's three paths that we started on a year ago, which is renewing the contract with Nemrick. That's the 95 to $145 an hour track. And we did pay that uh, for the last year, year and a half. The other one is to have a interlocal contract with another town and share an employee. Mm -hmm. and that's what is in the packet for the town of Johnson. Yeah. So we've been working probably for two months trying to figure out that because it's a new thing for a lot of towns to have the interlocal agreement. It's a it's a provision in state law which has certain parameters you have to check off in order for it to work. And then there's a bunch of what ifs that are more on the legal side. So those would be town attorney review. Uh, the third option is the intermunicipal service agreement, which we also looked at last year, which was trying to get regional planning to have an employee, and then multiple towns would basically pay for whatever hours under that agreement. The intermunicipal one, which is the one regional planning would run, would be better suited for more than three or four towns. So if they were actually running a program where they had assessors, staff over there, and towns could come and take uh, hours what they needed, and that would be much more regional service. When Wolcott backed out and Eden didn't commit, and Elmore and Greensboro were looking at it, and they all kind of, it was all new. So people, they, what we've been hearing from the other towns are, if you can start, start something up, then we'll look at you again, you know, to be a partner. We're thinking, yeah. 
So we're doing that. And Duncan Hastings uh, and Johnson is a select board member, and he's had 20 or 30 years of <clears throat> municipal admin stuff. And we're able to sort of sort through the muck and mire, if you will, of state law and municipal bringing boards along for the ride and all that stuff. So we're at a point now where we think we've narrowed down just because it's Hyde Park and Johnson of doing the interlocal contract, which is a it's a structured thing where the both boards would sign off on a on a contract or, that says here's how it works on the legal side, and then there's an MOU for the practical issues. And then there's a job description, and then there's the oversight piece. The oversight piece is we had one candidate, it was Justin, that came out of a regional search. They did a job search on the class late last year while we were trying to get to a regional position. And then before the towns really decided not to go along with it. So the restructuring part is switching to just the two towns coming up with an agreement where they would be hired um, to assessors. One assessor would be the starting uncertified assessor supported by a professional long-term assessor. So it's Gary Sabins is a professional. She works on the Morrisville reappraisal. She worked with Johnson before, and she's uh, perfectly interested and very excited to try to get, get the youth sort of into her field. You know, she's looking at assessors that are serving towns that are either retiring, about to retire, this was a lady we met with. I was going to say, she came and talked to us, right? Yeah. Early on, I think. Yes, so early she, on. She's been yeah. advocating for the regional approach. Yeah. But and Duncan, Duncan and I don't see that for just two towns, I guess. No. And, and Dun Duncan's email, who was that addressed to this last week? That Because that captured it pretty well. Yeah. I mean, yeah. obviously, we're all looking at it. Yeah, the summary. We do follow right. It. So the state legislature is working on bills to figure out the problem because every town is being. Oh, geez, 50% of Vermont towns are being told to reassess right. in, in June. We, we're one of those 50%. Of course they are. Okay. So the legislature has heard from towns say, you've got a problem. First of all, you're yes. forcing us to reappraise. We don't have enough money to reappraise. We just, oh, Hyde Park just finished five years ago. Usually it's a 10 year cycle. And then we're on we're on selling prices that are that are up here. Exactly. We're going to reappraise everybody and raise crap. You get hills on the brook road. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so all that stuff yeah, coming to a head with the legislature wanted that <laughs> input from Duncan to say, what is going on in those towns? If he was able to distill what we have done, yeah. I think we're the only two towns that are working on this at the statewide level because we keep getting calls from Bob Pillier about how we're trying to solve our own problems <laughs> because we're involved. With, they're trying to follow, solve a statewide problem. We're trying to you know, solve a local problem. But if you don't have listers on board that are yeah. going to put it out, you know, stay in and do their you know, 75 years old or 80 years old and do their minimum stuff, they're still getting forced by the state to comply with all the new standards and technology. And it's just way different than it was, you know, 15 years ago. And it's burning people out. Yeah. And they, they don't like the option of stepping aside for the contractors, which is really the sort of, the, so there's no middle option is what yeah. you know, Johnson and Hyde Park have been trying to figure out. Is there a middle option between the you know uh, twenty dollar and under volunteer level, which a lot of listeners were doing? Right. Some totally volunteer and you pay one person. That's what Hyde Park did yeah. for years, and then have a contractor supporting that person or go to contractor. So I think we're we've got a structure that could split the difference in that fifty sixty dollar per hour range yeah. of benefits and not have and have that control of an employee. So it would be an employee structure versus a contractor structure. And that's as far as we've got it. So the, the, the town of Johnson meets next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. They wanted to know what Hyde Park was thinking. And the recommendation based on it, where, where we're at is to set up that interlocal, set up the MOU to iron out all the details, the practical side, have the town attorney look at it all just because there may be something there that we're missing. One of those issues over time and how do you deal with that between the two towns? Oh, right. Not that the person's going to get eight hours for each town. Yeah. But if if there's other job duties under that town, either one, then I think all those hours count towards 40. Right. Even if they're because there's the same interlocal ties to towns as if there was one right. for that position. So we can't, as far as I can tell so far, we can't split it out where Johnson accounts for the 40 and we account for a 40. It's yeah. it's smushed together because of that option. So tonight we're voting on just the MOU that's drafted. Yeah, so the MOU, the interlocal uh, 
contracts and the authorization for hopefully one of the board members to sign those things when they're done for the legal review. And then we can then we can start to work with the employee. Johnson will start to work with the employee after that and directly. Either way, I mean it's 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 legislature law, right? I mean yeah, it's something right. We're basically an arm of the state. There's right. nothing local done on an appraiser. It's if you check this box and submit it by this time frame, and you have to pay somebody to do it. We're short on a reappraisal anyways. And then this this MOU is not, we're not adding any more costs over the No, we and we've been budgeting for this. Correct. We've been preparing for this. Yeah, two different pots of money. One is the reappraisal fund, which is half, which is half what we need to pay. Yeah. But then we also have the, the operating oh, the operating yeah. budget for the, the labor cost for the maintenance. Yeah. 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 Annual maintenance. So which we have, and this MOU would, or this position would would still be within our budget. Yeah, and part of what the legislature is doing is realizing that towns are going to be pushed basically if the state gonna mandate it and they're not going to take over the annual maintenance they may take over reappraisal that's what they're thinking about but the annual maintenance is still a lot of pressure on that to get it to the state standard which requires hiring professional people that are paid more than the volunteer lister who has no interest in going to training every couple of weeks to keep up with the state's new Stand program whatever they're doing so I think the state is thinking about supporting the annual maintenance as well as the reappraisal, either taking it over or keeping the grant money for the towns to do it. But I, I, yeah. Who knows? We won't know till May. So we won't need <laughs> at the earliest May. Like if it gets right. really complicated, it may go to the summer study committee, and we won't find anything until next May. In we won't interim. need Nemric anymore if we do this interim. Well, we Nemric in the sense that uh, I mean they're always Terry there for us. This. Gotcha. Terry would be our Nemrick. Okay. Okay. And Nemrick's fully aware. Talked to them on Saturday. They can take it or leave it. They have plenty of work. Right. They just want to know if they right. want to hold the spot for us. Okay. And I don't see that being needed right now, at least for all the things that we have to put it that way. Okay. When are you going to make a motion? Famous last words. Right. Okay. I don't, we don't really need one. Yeah, we need oh, to because we, we need yeah. to sign the legal. Yeah, review. yeah, pending the legal review. I'll make a motion to approve the MOU and the interim. I'll I'll sign it yeah. for, for Brian to sign future. Any major changes would be run back to the board. Yeah, Brian will make a call on whether yeah. it's so different that he needs to come back. Second. Second. All in favor, signify by saying uh, I remember there's a second. Yeah. Oh, you said Henry. I'm sorry. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, abstaining. Choice. Good. No. Nice have it. I suppose it'll be cheaper. This will be a lot cheaper. There's yeah. openings yeah. for the yeah. board if you guys yeah. are interested. Yeah. I'm going to fight. If it comes around. <laughs> no, you're shaking it in. No. <laughs> if it comes around. There's all <laughs> sorts of openings yeah. on all of yours. Yeah. Yeah. Right. School, town committees. Yeah. yeah. South Waste District. Okay, that's it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. To get on the ballot. Yeah. Where you can go to the floor and be voted in that way. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> Legislative <laughs> action. Let <laughs> word letter to. What was that? Yeah. No. No. Okay. This is no. Okay. No, no idea. Okay. Another legislative thing. Yeah. So currently, there's a handful of larger towns that have tip districts, which allow the big hotel and all the tax money that it generates to go back to the town. And the state, luck. The state skims fifteen or twenty percent and keeps it, and then the eighty or seventy-five percent can go back to the town to pay for the sewer and water and roads to support right. hotel. So the developer basically gets a, a supporting incentive to build because some of their infrastructure costs are paid by the state school tax. Of course, if you take money from the state school that wasn't ever there before because it's on the new construction, are they really out anything is an argument. So some people say that if you have these TIF districts and somebody builds a hotel, that all that should go right to the school system to help lower the school tax. Other people say, if you don't help projects with infrastructure by reducing the infrastructure costs for the developer, they won't build a hotel. So that's right. the that's the right. give and take. And the, the hotel is there forever. TIF district agreements might last the life of the bond, you know, 20 years or 30 years. So 
all of that stuff is wicked legal. We have a little mini program in Hyde Park called tax stabilization, where we can uh, waive 100% of the municipal tax for new investment. And we've done four or five of those in the last 10 years for some projects. Dan Keen and- I was saying, yeah, the like Aons, right? Yeah. Oh. And that's, a, that's one third of the tax bill that they get a break on, which helps. I mean, everything yeah. helps. Whether Dan Key would have located in Hyde Park without that, that's the debate. Yeah. It's, it's sort of like a good faith deal or some sort of where it comes back later, right? It's there for the investment's there forever. Exactly. Time, but yeah. How many people build a big building and take it all down? Yeah. The TIP district is limited to those five or six or whatever communities because the state was losing that tax dollar and some legislators didn't want to approve any more. But Everybody in the state legislature wants to give the money to these village centers and downtown areas so that all the housing can go in there and businesses can go in there and nothing happens outside those growth areas. So once you get away from the village centers or downtowns, the state is putting no money into that, except for current use and other things to try not have it develop. So they really are pushing these ideas of what can we do for these village areas. And one of them are mini tips. And they're, they're basically a parcel or two parcels. Best example, I think I put in the report, is like a, a, a Heath Lumber Mill wants to put in a, a multifamily affordable housing, but they don't have money for the sewer. The mini tip would apply just to that property where the new investment of the buildings, school taxes that would have been paid go into the sewer infrastructure payment until the sewer infrastructure payment is made up. So the developer doesn't have to pay 100% of that sewer improvement, which they normally would have to do. Oh, okay. So we're not voting on the actual tip tonight. We're voting on a letter to, sign a to letter do that. So the legislature wants to know- Which if, one are we supporting? You're just, just supporting future tips. Yeah, yeah right. there is no- The legislature, you're, the you're saying we want that legislature to go, right. legislation to go in and make okay. it available to you. And then the state legislators will make a decision on what it looks like in the end, and you don't really right. know until May. <laughs> it makes there'd be a whole other vote beyond, you know, like if if, uh, if oh, something it's totally yeah, it's just yeah. the authority to do it, and then you can make your own decision. This is only this talk. is just us saying we think it's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Which, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't think it's a good idea. I know. <laughs> yeah. I don't. Good. I first. I don't have any need for Hyde Park to sign this letter. I, I I I I might disagree with you. Okay. Just because we may need some growth in this town at some point. We definitely right? need there has to be an opportunity for growth. And what do we have for areas that would apply he, to the city? East Summit. Yeah. North or Park or let's say there's a lot of let's, 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 let's say let's say Chauvin let's say Chauvin decides he wants to sell a field out there across from <laughs> like a huge man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, he's so into that field. He yeah. loves that field. He has yeah. big plans for that field. If I could make a box tomorrow, I would own that field and it would be Lamoille County Rec. <laughs> Good. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. so support you on that, Matt. And that's that's his I, idea. I buy the Powerball. <laughs> I, I would have the money to pay for it. it <laughs> the lights would be bright enough. I would make sure his house was lit up. Huge lights. Huge lights. Another thing you should really talk to Steve Watson. <laughs> Who's Steve Watson? Steve Watson owns that old manor house just down the road. Do you know how many properties in Hyde Park that man owns? I don't even know. And he would be more than willing to do anything with this. He he's got enough property. <laughs> <laughs> but let's go back no, to no, the no, letter. No, no, no. We got no kids. He's got no. So okay. So you think we should sign it? It's well, just an idea. It's an idea. That's all. I, I, I think that any anything that came through, we would have an opportunity to bid it up or down, right? So okay, well, it doesn't even exist yet. It's that's what I'm saying. So we're just right. bidding on a theory that that right. potentially could bring growth to this town. But and why don't you think it's a good idea? I never it's, been a day supporter of kids. Okay. I think they're... Because she sat there in the seat before and she knows how they go. But, That's why you know, I, 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 I kind of agree. Yeah. Here, here, well, here's, like, my, here's my argument. I agree with the Tiff would support somebody who doesn't have the money no, to, to, to bring local growth. Correct. Which I a a non Tiff is somebody who has the money out in Long Island coming to our town and our community who already has them. 
Right. That's my no, I and they yeah. had it, they had it in Newport. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. Okay. okay, so you want to sign the letter? We'll just sign the letter. Yeah, it's not going to. Uh, Don't do it. You want to hear about it before you get off the board again? <laughs> Thanks. Is so, it? Am I going to get the? Am I got the seven person town meeting? We got to get next week. We got to prove it. Fair enough. I didn't vote on spending the town money. I voted on a potential for. Girl, like we, a potential for we girl. agree with you. Okay. Yeah, see, I agree. I say I. <laughs> well, oh, here's okay. what it really comes down to: is someday I want to, I want a Lamoille County sports program that allows our youth, and I may need that test someday. There you go. Yeah, me too. There you go. So, do we need nothing? It never, mm -hmm. never hurts a dream. We do need a motion to sign the letter, correct? Okay, so Matt made it. Rolly seconded it. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And opposing. No. Thanks a lot, buddy. Are you abstaining? I got your back. Yeah. <laughs> now I'll warn me before we come into these. Well, you better you better write it down so we will remember when he comes in about ten years. <laughs> okay. Oh, town warrants. You're right. Okay. Look at so yeah, the warrants. We everybody we looked at the warrants. I make a motion to approve the warrants that were on the site yep. and oh, yeah. are signing. Very second. Any second? Second. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Be opposed, abstaining. So I have it. They're all here. Signed. Hit it. Uh, get them back into the folder here. Our job done. So okay, or and in the minute for one twenty four, everybody had a chance to look at those. You've seen that dump truck we got for sale up there, town Yeah, it's Jake. You might want to take a. Look. I would miss that meeting, so I'm going to some new update. Update. Yeah. Good drive. Post it up as well. But I was out of meeting, so, so it's a second option. So taking this, yeah. we'll do a motion to accept the meeting. Uh, so we accept the minutes for the 24th. We just put that in a second last year, guys. We're approving the minutes of January 24th. We, I, okay. we all in favor. Yeah. You, you got a motion in a second. No, I'm sitting here, so I'm abstaining. She has to okay. I'll second. Okay, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Yeah, and I'm abstaining. That's okay. Did you put that on front porch form yet? Uh, I haven't read me a newspaper on Thursday. Yeah, it's getting posted. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I read that. I don't know if I front porch. It's, it's on the state system. I don't know if I got a front porch. I'll check. I could do it again. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> Once I see the ad on Thursday. Yeah. Capital so, projects yeah. and grants update. Projects, yes, we have a number of projects outstanding. Um, almost all grant projects, and I didn't know if the board had any uh, ideas for new projects. I guess so. In other words, when we, when we get to this time of the year, we're closing out the next year. We're trying. I have a grants report, which just kind of tracks all the different. Just more than I don't know, a dozen or so grant projects than just doing their normal going through the steps. But Matt has, uh, just for example, since he said it, you know, Lamoille County recreation fields, you know, they're really on the bigger side because not only because we have the ARPA money, it's because they're constantly getting these emails from the federal and state people that say, Do you have projects? And all my projects that I've had are either in action or pending kind of thing. And I just want to raise that um, opportunity with the board that you still have a lot of work to do on the ARPA. One of the ideas was the leveraging and one of the ideas we were kind of prioritizing. Mm -hmm. So we do need to spend time on that at some point. And that, that December 24th is coming right up. But some of these projects are taking two or three years and mm -hmm. the money has to be set spent by 26. Yeah. So. December 26 back to December 23 is sort of in your face a little bit from that timing perspective. Not an emergency. We have lots of requests for smaller projects that probably will get done over that period anyway, just because people are working on them or thinking about them. But there's 
opportunity to spend time on an agenda maybe before Brian leaves, maybe next week, mm -hmm. next meeting, to just take a breath and think about that because yes. If you're not thinking about it, I can tell you what projects are going in and what projects Mark might want or what the FEMA mitigation next phase is. Exactly. We church a project. project. Yeah. Well, the association, there's nothing else. Scary association on the board. So rather than Brian leave, for yeah. scary yeah. Say, yeah. you should have brought this up. Let's have a discussion at your next meeting and say, I really wish we had done this or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or any board member saying, you know, make that happen. I know there's some collaborative efforts going on through the county too i mean your kids have grown up and you understand like for your daughter to go like my daughter's in gymnastics the only place for her to go is colchester a year ago you know that's why i had we're hammering so hard and there's got to be something for the kids to do around here and there really isn't anything yeah you I mean, just have a bowling out there's nothing for kids and part of it, in the last meeting we talked about ledc and pat ripley was the director over there so i met with him a couple hours actually we went over like the state of the county so to speak on projects and development, economic development, and what his role is, because that's one of our resources. When the board here says our grant list is not going anywhere, this one percent stuff is not helping. So every year the tax rate keeps going up every three, four, five pennies every year, and it's nonstop. Almost all because the grant list is relatively stagnant. We had a one and a half percent increase in the grant list, and it, it you know your six point five percent budget increase is brought down to five six eight you know so every little bit helps because of inflation whatever but still if that's stagnant or starts to go the other way i have had no conversations with anybody in the last three months about new projects very unusual we went right through the end of fall last year right with people still talking about getting something on the agenda or some project that needs to be finished commercial or residential yeah and done at the really? same time there's not been a we got no DRB applications coming in and people that, and we did a three and, years of and material has fallen through its face. Like something, would, something would, happened. Why would is 25% what it was last year at this time? Yeah. So something happened in the fall. And I think the only thing I could think of is that there was, there was three years of pretty high um, pent up demand from COVID right. and people all went after that mortgage stuff last year. And they depleted the sort of the projects, and now they're like in a holding pattern or something. But all that means is when we go to do the next, not this April one grant list, but the next year mm -hmm. after, we're going to potentially not get off that one percent without some kind of new development. And everybody's looking at their tax bill and goes, "Oh, it's only fifty dollars more this year." Yeah. It's like, can we get that down to twenty five dollars more per hundred next year? You know? Yeah. And that's the only, that's where we left it with Pat Ripley. I said, what can you do for us? I can't do much. I'm one person. I have somebody that helps me with the books, but that's it. And he's helping the whole county. And he really does not get any support from the state to make anything happen. No. And, I, and it's a concerted state effort of not helping Little Little County. And I, I don't, I think somebody's made a decision not to force it on. So the res, result of that is each select board, whether you're a Morristown select board saying make it happen, which um, really good VPR interview last week with Todd Thomas and housing people about what they did and why they think it's fine and they're going to adjust and they're, they're going to be okay. Yeah. Or you get. Uh, Johnson, who's been struggling for years, either on the merger or trying to clean up uh, economic development, they have a they have an industrial park down there that's undeveloped, and they have little resources. So it's like if if the town really wants to do something, Pat Ripley's summary was, "Use your ARPA money and make something happen." Yeah. Now, hmm. that was his main recommendation. Yeah. Because after the ARPA money comes down, then you're right back right. on the tax. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're on the taxpayers, right? Yeah, you do. Or you don't do anything. <laughs> or you don't do anything. <laughs> or you don't do anything. <laughs> you don't do anything. Yes. We don't want to do anything. You know, the five cents a year tax rate. Right. right. They, they come in. <laughs> yeah. What properties do we own that uh, are stagnant and not doing anything? That we own. There's, there's stagnant properties. Who owns this right here? Town. Um, we, we own what are you pointing at the big the old, the old, the old ball field oh the old ball fields up the yeah. field. yeah. it's all town property yeah. the, the town designated a... association got it for the cemetery right what and the association 
add so, on to that field? Cemetery commissioners are working their way with yeah. grave sites yeah. into the five acres so far right. end up there. Right. Yeah. They they do once every five years or ten years, they put another row in or something. I That's what's have, up there, five acres. Five acres left of the meadow. But there's it's on twenty or thirty acres of town land, but yeah. a lot of it's you know streams and steep right. slope down the barrage. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, the board has talked about, you know, maybe this is a better commercial property being on Route 15. So sell this property and move to the village where all the other services are. Um, North Hyde Park, Industrial Park has half a dozen undeveloped properties, some with stone. Can the town put money in there to try to make something happen with structures up there versus stone and storage units, which are at the very low end of your grant list growth. There's individual properties, like the, there's 17 acres off the FW Drive that needs permitting issues to be resolved. Do you put money into that to help that property become more marketable? The town doesn't want to put No, you, you would have to certainly, the town has partnered with LEDC and Memorial Housing and other projects to clear permitting. And then a private investor would come in with a kind of a start right. because somebody cleared some of the bigger hurdles, whether it's a road or whether it's an Act 250 permit event, or something that would you know make somebody walk away. How much is available for the ARPA money? We have about 600,000 left in the ARPA. In the ARPA? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the Jordan building is for sale. The which building? The Jordan building on the other drive. Oh, that is? No, you're not. How much? A million. A million. It'd be a perfect rent. It would be yeah, perfect. Close to a million bucks. Yeah. yeah. Bummer. Win that lotto. Win that lotto is right. I know, right? <laughs> what the, the list of, grant of capital projects yeah, that you Johnson. have right now, is that on the website? Or can you email that to us? Yeah, but if two, we have two projects. That voyage are that's okay. You can take it. There's a great list. Okay, both of them. Yeah. So I have to get both of those updated. If you look at yeah, all, that'd be good. And then we can take a look and then yeah, but they all have like do brainstorming. I would, thing like to, I would like to find We're something that we can invest in and for the future for the town and uh, development. What are we going to do to to get it so we can start generating revenue? I agree. Yeah, but you can't solve the grand list problem. No. But you can make it. Yeah, so start or, or, or even the fact that the town taking an active lead right puts the word out that you're not anti that it, right it sort of works that way too yeah so we talked about a business friendly cert certification state of Vermont will never get there they're just not that kind of thinking at the state level so it comes back to the region of the town mm -hmm. because a lot of times if you're looking at we had a, we had a case of a landscaper person with 20 employees that was looking in Lamoille County wanted to locate his house on the property and have the business. And he went to Morristown and they said, we don't allow that mixed use. Hyde Park does. Yeah, it's North Hyde Park. But it. when the person was looking at Hyde Park zoning, you know, it's RR2, it's RR5. It's not, it doesn't appear to be best business friendly. So we had to walk through um, the details of the bylaw to find out that he, he certainly could do it if he wanted it on the right property. The zoning would support him coming to Hyde Park. More towards North High Park or more towards those areas rather than actually the, the Route 100 corridor is all RR2. And if you look at the zoning district, there's contractor business uh, prohibition, but there's a little asterisk in there that says uh, some of those uses can go in if you are in a mixed use neighborhood. Most of Route 100 is mixed use. You have businesses, you have campground, you have a Casella, yeah. you have a farm, you have residential. They leave a little bit of everything. You're not going down Pucker Brush West or something where there's house, 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 house. But along Route 2, which are both the same R 2 district, um, Rosso, yeah. he made use of the exception because on the zoning map, it looks like R 2 except that his business was allowed under that exception. That it wasn't on a side road development. Like, Casella, same reason. Yeah. So there, there's plenty of examples. Putting the word out, the marketing side is the other thing that's sort of missing, if you will, from my part. And then finding it off. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the last thing, but at least the town, if you wanted to, could just say, 
come to our yeah, channel. Yeah, all those, <laughs> all those little marketing things that people can do that we don't do necessarily. It's almost like case by case on that landscaper call or you know somebody by chance talking to one of you people and say, hey, uh, do you know of any land around here? And then you're like, well, it's, you know, what's this? It's like board member's not going to know exactly. But you should talk to Ron or talk to somebody in the office or something like that. But it's really hard for people that um, have time on as a priority to weed, weed through all that stuff, unless the town is making it sort of easier to get there. So we talked about a sort of like an investor checklist for Hyde Park or some of these things can be handed to them as yeah yes you can have mixed uses on 100 right if you have frontage on 100 and you like that lot you can have a mixed use development not evident from the zoning bylaw but practical in the sense that it's already happening and it has happened but it's happening in a way where you don't feel like you're an industrial zone right you feel yeah. like you're in a country road with a few businesses and houses you can yeah. even you know that, so that was the second part of that, other than the select which of stepping it up and having some investment and trying to figure out one project and move something ahead. It's really just making sure that you're the, you know, um, putting the good information out there so people do get interested and dig a little further instead of feeling like, oh, Hyde Park doesn't a lot want to get this in the family homes. Yeah. And I, I don't know what the impression is. I don't talk to those people, but right. what is the impression on the street? They don't know, except for the logical one that we're a heck of a long way from the interstate. And that's one of the biggest impediments to getting north of Morrisville. Uh, when uh, when Fred's wanted to relocate from Newport, mm -hmm. for some reason, they felt that Morrisville and potentially the Dunkin' Donuts roundabout was far north as they could muster from their corporate angle. They could not make the turn and go up. Hyde Park to get near Casella. It was just too far to go that extra four miles or whatever. So that is a big hindrance to, but small it's business, 20 people, you know, 5,000 square foot building, totally doable. We just had the guy do that, the uh, seal coating for foundations, relocate North Hyde Park in the do so building. Totally good. Residential, commercial mix. North Hyde Park. So, so like that property in North Hyde Park that we own, is there ever potential for the town to advertise that for sale? That's not not that property on its own, but the properties that you have direct control over or can get control over. If you could work with landowners to say, what what do you want to do with your property? I want to sell it, but I can't sell it because X Y Z. And the town says we can help you with X and Y. You still have to deal with the Z. Right. That might get people over the like you were saying uh, the tip, you know, right. just a little bit of help could yeah. help somebody turn from I can't do that I bark to I can do it. Right. And we're not really focusing on that on a sure. uh, day to day basis. Yeah. Anyway, that, that was the summary of what I got from. I don't even know if you could get permits for the town to start filling that in. The gamble property. Yeah, you know, if you had ditching well, material. And there's a. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that, that's because you got to progress. You got to stay so far away from that brook. Yeah, the the and so so and 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 there's the, the neighbor property, but that's all. That's all in that process. And yeah, the buyout program did the applications went in for both of those properties, yeah. so those could be town property. They're supposed to be for open space, not for commercial, because they're in the floodplain. Right. So uh, that, that is a potential for something. You know, even parking for the guy on or you know, community that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. Well, it's it's all part of that. You know. Yeah. I was, Tom, was it Tom Shepard? Wrote it every time this year. He writes me an email and says, Oh, I've gotten into the school stuff, and here's what the business manager says. And he writes this long email about how the school's uh, performance is bad and the school taxes are too high. So that's his. Ten, it up for yeah, for 10 years, he's been writing almost the same thing every time. And it's partly true that if you, if you <clears throat> want to locate a business or your family, one of the things you check on is the ranking of your elementary school. That's just one of the things you check off if you're going to locate to a town and kind of try to, you know, settle, so to speak. But I think the, the elementary schools ranks 111th out of 165 schools in Vermont or something. So how do we, how does select board have any impact on that? I don't know. But it's part of the marketing of Hyde Park is have a good elevator so I think you know it's one of the pieces we check. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Is there something the town can do to stimulate, you know, getting into the, the 50s and 60s in Vermont instead of hanging out near 500? I don't know that answer. Not a lot is I'm sure. 
not really looking for anything, but that's part of the grants and programs. And if you come up with something in the next couple of weeks, we can sort of put it on the agenda for minutes or half an hour, just to, just to have that time. I'll get, yeah. I'll get the list of current stuff to you. Yeah, that'd be great. We'll, you know, ongoing grants and the you know, capital projects we have coming up. Just to see what's up, what we're out, what we've already. I know we've yeah. discussed so many, but to remember well, on the website, you can see one of the older versions of the ARPA. Yes, I, I have. Yeah, I do. Some are getting tough stuff as we yeah. yeah. There's still more that are and nobody's really adding any. I guess we could we could take on a community ad. We did that last year to just to see if anybody yeah, in the yeah. community wanted to provide anything. We got something from the loyal community house with fifteen thousand dollars to help them. Oh, yeah. That was the only written request we got, and the board hasn't acted on that yet. But they are relocating, so let them relocate to Center Road. And I don't know what's going to happen with the Main Street property. But oh, right. They're moving by, by me. They're day. taking over for us, tell us, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Brian and Ron? Here's me. Oh, wow. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> The voice. Voice. I've been very quiet. <laughs> yes, you have. <laughs> How can we help I'm, you? Yeah, I'm just I'm here representing the guy on Valley Hall, and I'm um, Ron. I I know I had sent you um, an up uh, a notice email about the guy on Valley Hall wanting to apply for the AARP Community Challenge Challenges Grant. So I wasn't sure if that was specifically on this agenda or not. Uh, no, was that a letter of support that you needed or? Uh... Um, well, uh, based on your communication with me, um, and at this point, I don't have a specific dollar amount that the committee will end up asking for, but um, the grant, does go to shoot I don't have it on top of my head here um, it's like 20 or 25,000 possibility but um, March 15 deadline for after correct correct so just wanted to um, make you all aware that so the we are in the process of drafting an application um, to look at ADA accessibility improvements for the first floor. Uh, wheelchair ramp and making the bathrooms easier to ex to access. Um, so that's what we're looking at in terms of this particular grant. And because it's a town-owned building, um, we need to get approval from you folks to apply. Yeah, I think the if you had a, a letter of support drafted for the grant, that would include the scope and a budget amount including any match required from the town that would be that could be uh, addressed or looked at for the next board meeting okay there's no match i can tell you that yeah. so we'll just draft up a um a, let, a letter of support that you folks can just um review and approve if so yeah, being okay yeah, it's a good step for the for committees that are pursuing projects to have this kind of discussion followed up with a letter of support, uh, hopefully when the application level is complete, and then come back to the board if things change during the process. It is. is this the same accessibility issue with like the right of way they were dealing with? Uh, no, this is the front ramp. Okay. Yeah. We're de I'm dealing with the attorney on the side easement for the fire escape. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Now. Yep. While we're on to the other business, Ryan wanted me to announce that they did make a, an assistant chief, Brad Courier is assistant chief, and Danny Fenora is lieutenant. There was one on front porch form or something. I saw it. They just missed it. it Someplace I saw it. Who's lieutenant? Uh, Dan Bernor, Jr. B U R N O R. B-U-R-N-O-R. Yep. And Greg Carrier. Carrier. With an E at the end. That's for the town. Right? Hyde Park Fire Department. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah, do we have anything with the personnel? Possible executive say. Yeah, you had pushed. Uh, uh, I think it was Krista, and I think that was it. Yeah. Oh, two meetings ago now right. to the port to tonight. Okay. So I don't. I don't have anything else after that, so we can adjourn and sort of a semi-adjourn. Yeah. Executive side. Okay. Executive side. Okay. So we got to discuss some. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Hey, Kathy, it's Valentine's Day. Can you take her out? I know this was a nice date for Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Put it right on the spot. I know. Yeah, they got off the hood. Uh, yeah, fairly quick. I know. I saw her online, and yeah. then I was. Then they were walking in. And it was easier to do it in person. Yeah. Stuff sometimes. It, Recording stopped. Yeah. So motion to move into executive session. So moved. And second. Second. Okay. I'll embarrassing if I was saying aye. 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 <laughs> that's your time. Okay. That's, that's, that's not my that's time. Yeah, right. Okay. Let's see. I make the motion. That we give um, Krista a one time payment of $3,000 um, as a sort of yeah, compensation, thank you, you, whatever, for having obviously you stepped up and done um, all of Kim's work as well. And uh, and this is a one time, and if uh, Kim is not back soon, then there's going to be. In the next paper, you were saying. Yeah. That okay. will be paid in the next pay period. Next, next pay period. Yeah. 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 So okay. I'll second that. I was going to second yeah. it, Chas. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. I'll Matt, second that. Matt wants to second. Matt second. <laughs> it's hard. I'm sorry. You <laughs> idiot. I was going to make the motion, but Susan beat me oh. to it. Okay. All in favor, see if I was saying aye. Aye. Maybe opposed, abstaining. The ayes have it. And we're going to discuss retirement. No, no just, I just want to keep. We've been skipping it. We we have it. Dealing with it. Exactly. It's, a, yeah, it's a tactic. It works well. Well, my my better half is saying you. I bet you're not talking. But I was like, yeah. Well, we have been talking about. We've been nibbling around the edges. So we have a we had a master plan of a thirty day break, which is when I could start drawing, and then you guys can do whatever you want after that. You can set up a one year term to do the same job. You can set up a, some other interim thing. We do have a thing in the budget for the planning and zoning position, which is in the budget. So yep. if that gets approved, we can start to advertise for that and start transitioning and all that okay. business. So there's a bunch of stuff going on. Right. But getting to the 30 day is most advantage to me, uh, anybody in the state retirement or town retirement, the closer you get to the end of the fiscal year. So the last pay period is June 25th, the last working day, which would be ideal because then all of that whole year for fiscal year 23 gets rolled into the three-year average. It doesn't happen I only get a partial okay, you know, right. go backwards to gotcha. last year, FY22, yeah. 21 and 19, or 20 versus 23, 22 to 21. So that's how that works. And that's why that date sort of comes up. So your goal is that? That's the that's the goal to close out and start drawing. Now the state retirement system lets you do one year contracts. So there's really just that 30 day gap. And if you want to do something that's after that, even if it's over 24 hours, which is your mandatory re a system you have to join again if you go over 24 you can do you can do more 24 but you have to have a one-year contract of some sort so that it expires or you come back at less than 24 and do something like that so there's all sorts of little options in there okay the, the getting to that discussion really the, the meat of it is what happens at top meeting day exactly if we get the 24-hour position and that's part of what i'm doing now then we should get on that right away with the fifth person if that gets approved too. Yeah. Right. So there's a bunch of hiring right. and training stuff that has to happen too. So I don't see myself like just disappearing because right. that's not going to be fair to the new person, but there's some time before June break or even after that. I don't know, but I'm sort of nervous about finding people. About myself. Yeah. Exactly. So I don't really, we had a hard time on the, the assessor type thing and I don't, I don't know if the right mix the market is job market is totally upside down. It is. You get town administrators, even around here, two years ago, you never saw anybody getting up to 100. Just didn't see it. 
all over the place now from from this area out of Bennington any other places they're all pushing that but like I never thought I'd see that of course it's been a long time since I've been doing this but right but uh, still yeah. yeah so I don't know what the if, if the town stays with the town administrator full time or you break it up into some other components right. Johnson's trying to do that right now with economic development person mm -hmm. Wolfett's trying to do that but there's so much involved with those grants and capital projects mm -hmm. that's where your meat of your town is too Right. You know, making progress and all that stuff. So I, I think I do want to talk to you about that at some point, but I want to get to town meeting day sure. first and see where the voters are with those concepts, especially okay. the pit voters of that. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be back. <laughs> You'll be sitting over you there. You see that new truck You'll out there? You'll be sitting over there. Yeah, and the Thursday, I can only get my 38 point uh, uh, oh, new home. Anyway, that's the heavy. Okay. Yep. I saw you ran out I did. Yep. <laughs> and, um, I want to repeat that this motion. Motion made by Susan Barlett to pay Crystal Jones a one time payment of $3,000 to be paid in the next pay period for her previous and continued work in the absence of the town clerk, seconded by Matt Morin. Does that work? Yep, that works. Yep. All right. <clears throat> cool. And I'm good. So, can we put that on the or like you're gonna have to wait till after town meeting anyway? Right? I think so because it's a part of the piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think if people talk about that at town meeting, I don't know if they will, but that's yeah. that was kind of what I was trying to explain to people that it really is a state of flux because the town needs all these pieces to work right, and then you do get somebody new having them train well, like we're spending. You know, time with Jennifer, we spend time with the planning zoning person. Yeah. I think that yeah. that flexibility of a person working part time at a at a slightly higher pay seems to be a, getting to be a sweet spot for some people. Yeah, yeah. They're not going to do part time for fifteen, right? And they're probably going to expect a hundred or more for forty. Do it all like the lead ACL person at twenty four seven. So I'm I'm thinking just like maybe somewhere in between is a is a good spot, but yeah. They're all new to me. This whole hiring stuff and not having candidates and yeah, paying people high wages. I mean, Duncan was a good example. He was town and village administrator over <laughs> Johnson for years. Plus Georgia, Vermont, he worked in, and he was he he never made it over seventy five thousand or something all his years with all experience. And they hired him for ninety five to do half his job. Oh uh, yeah. And I'm like, that's not quite unusual for people that stay in a position for a long time. Sure. But still, it's in his face, and the market has changed enough where I don't, I don't know. I, I, you always want to try to do the best combination of stuff. It takes a lot more discussion than nine o'clock at night or whatever. Right. So. Okay. Good job, right. Paige. I know. Good meeting. Motion to adjourn. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, uh,